Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to Fear. So, it's it's a weird point graphically where this game is. Looking at it paused right now, this actually looks pretty good for a 15 year old game. It's still kind of in this one screenshot and I've been noticing this is that at certain spots if you just stop and look at its highest settings that I have it set up to it looks slightly better than a lot of the low effort horror games that show up on Steam but unfortunately we have crossed a point where the truth of the matter is half of the low effort asset flip horror games on Steam actually look better than this. Like, if you had told me this came out in 2019, I would believe you from this one screenshot. There, there's nothing wrong with the graphics here. The major problems we're running into as we start this level to do kind of the same thing over and over again is the gameplay loop. So, yeah. As we are constantly just doing the same thing over and over again, the game has gotten very repetitive and not very interesting. Like we, we creep our way through something like this and we're probably going to get a spooky thing on the monitor. So, the father Wade just shot Norton, and he's walking that way, and he just went into the vault. Uh, so maybe we're we're gonna have a quicker experience here, and not have to worry so much. Good rins of Norton. There was really no reason for him to be in in this game at all. The, let's see. I keep getting the feeling that I'm not as tall as I should be. Hmm. I don't know why I'm getting that feeling, but it, it does seem like I'm shrinking for some reason. Um, if the father needed to be shown as the bad guy, by killing somebody and I wouldn't be surprised if they try to twist the story so he's not the bad guy by killing that guy um, he could have done that with one of our team members like that would have been a lot better if we had had somebody say that fear investigator lady show up and she was she had the gun on him and he got the drop on her and shot her that that would be cool looks like there's gonna be a lot more are we gonna get some cutscene or conversation with this guy in all fairness I tried to shoot this guy he locked you out the only way in is to divert power to the door so we have a full-on message here that we really don't need Harlan Wade has entered the vault and sealed it by diverting power away from the doors. Norton Mapes is seriously wounded and after being shot by Wade. Mission Fear Operative must redirect power. Thanks, game. Like, divert power to the door. This almost seems like this was what they were going to do throughout the entire game. And they kind of quickly realized. Like, I tried to kill this guy. So, I can't really blame Harlan Wade. This guy has been completely unhelpful and uncooperative uh, in a emergency situation erasing hard drives locking doors on me threatening my life as an as a soldier sending what seems like the military after me um, so I don't know if we're gonna run into anybody down here or if this is just straight up a run around this level that was probably designed for multiplayer and try and find the power control seems like this is going to be 
that's going to be a shortcut. Hmm. Alma is supposedly most powerful here as we get closer and closer, so in theory this book looks like this would have been something you could pick up and read if they were going to have some books. But yeah, little little bits of... Uh, I'm not even like really a fan of the Skyrim-esque let's put a bunch of books where you read backstory uh, elements, but clearly they, they would have done better if they had paid a writer to write some backstory and then used any of the backstory that they couldn't animate or put put in as a spoken word element uh, in dossiers uh, in just pieces of paper that we would have picked up. It would have been better than me going to the laptops and then having having the people tell me what's on the laptop. Hmm, I thought that was something special, but it isn't. Here we have in what was probably an explosive section. If I shot it. Hmm. So am I supposed to shoot that and, and blow up the... Am I supposed to just... Yep. So... Yeah, there's just major problems with this gameplay loop that they failed to lock in. This is where you hear some some game developers say, first we make a game that's fun and then we add everything else. And that is really the way to, to make a game. And in all fairness, this may have been perfectly fun in its multiplayer in in instance and it just may fall apart in its single player experience so we've got replicas like why are we fighting replicas instead of the military people or maybe these aren't replicas actually these are possibly uh, possibly just heavy armored ATC agents which that that would be new all right so we need to decide do we want this gun all right we have nothing so we might as well swap there for the grenade launcher but it does seem like you kind of constantly have to swap around Climbing up and down these ladders feels more like you're playing a game like Mist. Like it feels like you're you're playing some almost point and click adventure game that that slowly transitions you from one point to another point instead of a a actual full action, fully fully interactive world. Let's see. I don't know what that symbol is supposed to mean, but it seems almost like we're going to have a red key card, a blue key card, and a yellow key card. Hmm. Right. In theory, I could get up there, but I, in practicality it doesn't seem like that would really work. I definitely don't want to jump down there fall to my own doom it's because we we've had way too many deaths and just pains in the butt situations would this barrel explode almost feels like it would explode with acid this is like the most motion we've seen of any anything with the exception of the cars. So, yellow. 
And this is the most video game we've seen in, a, in the entire game. It, it totally feels like there was a team that was really committed to making this game successful that worked on like these last few levels. Maybe they didn't work on anything else. Um, maybe they worked on the first level or something. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. So there's two that they're making this more difficult than it needs to be. There's going to be two two connectors that you have to swap for several different locations. Um, now I open this door so we are doing this extremely linearly. The game is taking too long to save than it really should. Uh, that certainly goes to show the age of this game is that it actually has to pause to save when there's really no reason why it would need to do that. That's just a probably example of this being a non-multi-threaded, multi-processed engine. So even though I have a pretty modern computer that has six cores less 12 threads, I bet only one of them is being used whatsoever for for this game. And yeah, that, that happens for a lot of things. Uh, even modern games aren't particularly great about using multi-threaded programming. Um, I don't know if this guy threw a grenade at me or not. And probably don't have time to run around, run back if he did. Didn't have anywhere I could have run to. Hmm. So, in the gameplay loop right now, this is where it, I would need to be able to run around and potentially collect and pick up things and by the time I've collected and picked up things in this area my sl time slowdown should be completely full and you can see it's not and I've expanded my reflexes so maybe if you just ran through the entire game and never expanded your reflexes it would be completely full but that's not very helpful <laughs> just knock the computer over So he's looking for the name of the woman that was used to make Alma, which is, which basically just means Alma is looking for the name of the woman, looking for her mother. Yeah, I don't think it's a it's much of a surprise though that that the creepy girl is going to have the twist that she's she may be super powerful and psychic, but she's not really just nefariously evil incarnate uh, that that's not a big twist it wasn't 15 years ago it wasn't it wouldn't be a big twist now it wouldn't have been a big twist uh, even 25 years ago I would say like the the idea of just assuming that children are innocent is or just at the very least not nefariously evil for no reason is pretty common all right so yeah you can't jump out of here <laughs> well that's pointless again an example of now this level is totally designed to be a multiplayer level. Hmm. 
right, so do we want to go over here and climb up here? Or do we want to check what's in here? Not really getting any direction or anything, so it's not super surprising that there's there's a lot of hemming and hawing about which direction is the right direction. And it seems like they almost intentionally have removed any Ulma spooky sections right now. Alright, so reflexes are increased again. My health kits are at maximum. We've got everything full with maybe the exception of bullets. Which, okay. Yep, this totally feels like a transition you would have seen in Mist or Riven. One of those uh, puzzle games. Where they only had a limited amount of resources to animate and so the transitions were the things they animated. It makes no sense in a first person shooter. Here we've got a computer making something closer to a washing machine sound than what a computer should be making. Even if there was like major major malfunctions in a computer it shouldn't be making a sound like that. Um, all right. So, hmm. An interesting question I guess to ask is how many grenades are each of these guys allowed to have? Do they have an infinite amount of grenades on them? Do some guys have a grenade but most don't? Uh, I think there's a guy here but I can't really see. This guy's the big problem. We need him dead. Because he's got a rocket launcher. Hmm. Here, it, there's a guy crawling on the ground. dead finally and this is mostly just missing missing the guy see that's down to 60 health so you, you use two health kits you get back up a to a hundred I'm almost out of bullets um, had I come over here, it wouldn't have done anything. It doesn't. I want to just jump down and tell him. Fairly certain I know I'm safe to get back up. Because if it turns out that there's a lot more difficult of a way to get back up. Or if I potentially actually take damage or get stuck. Okay. Seems like the door is is the right move. So I'm just gonna jump over. That didn't seem like that did any damage. Although it does still feel like I am crouched down lower like I 
think maybe my 3D model is screwed up somehow. Uh, that's, I guess, all I could really say. I think we've got to switch guns. And... Gotta look around and try and find as much... You know that that was the gun I had before. Boy, do I wish I had had a button mapped to running. I just don't have room for it. Hmm. It really does go to show how there was. Definitely a lack of understanding on how games should be designed in the sense that you can that it was pretty standard to make PC games try and use approaching all 108 or 105 keys on a keyboard. Um, and I'm exaggerating there, but only by a small amount. Like, they do seem like they want to use. I would say at least 20, 20 keys when in all practicality you really only need need the number of buttons on a controller, modern controller. Um, and frankly you probably need less buttons than even are on a modern controller because very few games require you to do a lot with the d-pad or the back button or the pause button or the um, Xbox button in the middle or the PlayStation button if there's a PlayStation button like right there and a lot of times you're not even using the right bump and left bump as much as you could It would be insane if this is what put them over budget and this is why none of the other game feels polished enough. I, I would hardly suspect that's not really the case. I, I would suspect what happened is this was a game that was super focused on being a multiplayer game and had no intention on having a single player experience at all. And then some kind of negotiation came around guess I don't want to fall down there. Uh, there's something over there. And a, some renegotiation happened and they were given more money to make a single player uh, element. Okay, there's a there's a brick blocking it that direction. Hmm. Okay. Am I supposed to shoot this? Or am I supposed to figure a way around? Because... Uh, it seems like I am actually going to just go down this way. Interesting. So I could have fallen. Still probably can't fall down there. This is almost certainly them attempting to to ensure that we see this cutscene, this little computer. So, are they saying Alma is the mother and Fexton is the... That really doesn't make a lot of sense at that point because then that... Then has, I suppose, Alma presenting herself as this ghost child of eight years old. 
it, it kind of is ridiculous. I don't feel like I'm being super dense here, either. I don't feel like there's a story that I'm not getting because I, I'm misunderstanding something. It, I, I feel like the game is is being very bad about making it clear. And sure, I and many people have criticized uh, when people just repeat, when games or stories repeat the same thing over and over again. Uh, say it three different times and make it blatantly obvious but that actually is helpful a lot of times too and without them doing the one thing that they needed to do which was to name Alma's mother if Alma is whoever her mother is like whatsoever like even if Alma's mother is totally not involved in all this is shut down so we can't activate it I was wondering what would be the option there um, let's see or if they just said Alma was an orphan from a foreign country or something something to to just reinforce that their her parents and her lineage don't come into play Any of that would be helpful if Alma is supposed to be the mother of Fextal. They really should just say Alma's Fextal's mother, and they should have said it right then at least. And they didn't. So this was just an effort to go in circles, but then. I don't remember there being a door or something. So I don't know where we're going now. Must be a door. Up. Uh, we, we saw a door over there, but... Must be some kind of door... Over here. That was locked. Yeah. Yeah, this was it. Moving on, saving. Alright. You know what? Um, let's just swap to this gun. And... These guys are just going to stand there, so... I can literally do nothing. I just have to kind of wait until I can slow down time. So I can try and hit these guys. The good news is these guys aren't really hurting me too much but the bad news is it's that did use a lot of this gun which not really in a good position to to have wasted extra bullets and That's probably the last we'll ever see of those, if I was to guess. There's a big old generator. Hmm. Yeah, and... It would be so crazy if we started seeing like zombies or something that Alma could create starting at the very end of this game and just things that would have been teased for a potential sequel. Um, you don't need an entire game to establish uh, you're in some kind of futuristic world where 
psychics exist and there's this fear team and they they have slightly improved uh, slightly higher technology guns and you have a time slowdown ability which is not really explained uh, seems like we'll have to either sneak into there to get that or we'll forget that exists It's a pretty big area, so there is a chance that there's going to be a boss fight. I wouldn't be surprised. And that might be a little difficult to, to take care of and deal with. If we're going to have to fight, say, the super powerful guys. So I've got 15 shots with this gun. And then that makes my main gun this grenade launcher. And I don't know if I could just walk on that and use that as an elevator to lower myself down. I don't think that's really what the game intends for me to do. Although maybe it is. Hmm. Well, whether you were supposed to be able to do it that way or not, I was able to do it that way. And we've never done anything like that before. So, definitely can feel why that would not be particularly desirable. I hear the sound effects, but I don't see anything flying around. And... Yeah, so I just don't know. Let's just activate this. Alright, energy is now open. Let's see if we can look around and... See if we're gonna get surprised by anything. Hmm. Seems like that's a path. And pretty much taking every path that's available to us. There's 95. So I wouldn't be surprised if I missed one and I should be at 200 health. Unfortunately, the health upgrades don't increase your, um, they, they don't increase your reflexes or your amount of armor you can wear. But then this game is so hard, I, I could not imagine too many people would even bother to try and speedrun this game uh, at a level where they're not even trying to get the collectibles hmm. seems like they really want me to listen to to this you have two new messages first message from I'm gonna leave this med kit So yeah, it seems like, I don't know what this is supposed to be, is this just somebody photo scanned their butt in the, and decided to put that in the game? Um, 
like photocopied. Um, so yeah, it seems like Harlan's the bad guy as much as Genevieve is the bad guy. Um, seems like they're all the bad guys, which kind of sucks. Like, we needed somebody to be the good person that we're trying to save and help, and oddly, that's the creepy girl, Alma, more than anybody else. Alice, I guess, is supposed to be that, but, uh, we will have to see if she even shows up, or if she is just kind of dead, and the game was was not just having us hallucinate she, she is dead. We've already seen a hallucination of her being dead. We're just trying to figure out now if if that's really true. Right. I have no idea what what all this gibberish is. It's just kind of sci-fi power redirection. Now our our goal is to enter the vault. And I know that there's still like a couple more levels unless the game has instead just stopped giving us load screens for intervales. Yeah, that there really is no way to to do this. I need a different gun. Alright, so 37 shots here versus 15 shots here versus a ton of shots here. Hmm. Yeah, we have to get away from this, um, unfortunately. E Just not enough room. Not enough room to hold on to all of these guns. Mm, that's no fun. And I could heal myself and pick up that that health kit, but I, I don't see that there would be a reason for that. Hmm. So almost still in there in what form or fashion? Like is she an 18 year old girl now because she was an 8 year old girl when they made uh, when they made Fextel but wait a minute if she's the mother of, of Fextel she would have had to been 13 at, at minimum to I would say to actually go full term and have a kid so Alma then would have to be 23 and that almost makes it seem like Alice is Alma at that point or you better understand the story and I, I suspect this is the case is that Alma was the first child and she is the sister of Fextel and but even if that was the case then she still wouldn't be an eight-year-old girl so like nothing makes sense here like she she just would not look as young as she looks now uh, she would be minimum age 18 now uh, and that does so here we have Fexel and Alice as a probably the best hallucination we've seen yet um, let's just switch to this, and it still would help if I actually hit these guys.
And yeah, those guys really aren't doing any damage to me. So I don't I don't know how they were hurting me before when they really aren't now. Is this guy still alive? You have to destroy this facility before he lets her out. There are four pylons. Damage the reactor cells and you'll trigger a chain reaction. Very video gamey. Including myself, apparently. Creepy music. So, yeah, I don't know if, if maybe this is the... Maybe Alma is just so magical she doesn't age. That might be the case. Locate Harlan Wade. Of course, we really don't have a game if we don't let her out in one way or another. And here we have one of these sideways elevators. There's a word for these, but I forget what the name of it is. I'm losing your signal. We may be out of contact from here on. Hmm. Be careful on this wave guy. God only knows what he's capable of. Well, we know he already shot one guy. So. Unless I just totally misread the the summation I read. There are 12 inner veils. So we are now entering inner veil 10, Revelation the Vault. Fear Operative is entered the vault. Norton Mapes is urging the destruction of the facility due to unspecified hazard. Well, he specified Alma as a hazard. His motives are presumed to be selfish, but caution is recommended. Uh, objective remains to secure Harlan and Alice Wade and eliminate Paxton Fennel. Which at this point, I think arresting all of them, if possible, is equally valuable. Or killing all of them and just being done with it is equally valuable. Uh, just to be done with it. And we are going down this elevator. There's a lot of technology here. I don't know what I'm really looking at, though. Like, what am I looking at? Some big ball of energy surrounded by water. Which, that's nice water effects, certainly. Alright, well, probably knowing that we have more to do. It's probably not wise to go in blazing the somewhat more powerful electric gun. But yeah, it's almost like there's a rock, paper, scissors mechanic here where you use the electric gun on the electric uh, enemies, the, the heavily armored guy, the rocket launching mech, and the flying turrets and probably the turrets hanging from the roof too uh, and then you use all the other kinds of guns for the more human flesh enemies um, unfortunately it's nothing as complicated or as interesting as like borderlands where you would have a gun that has fire damage or acid damage or electric damage um, or explosive damage yeah that's the four different styles that you can do and those are things that existed at least in Dungeons and Dragons so they could have been concepts added had they had more time and more ambition to have a wider variety of enemies and just having a wider variety of any enemies in general would have been very useful uh, anyways it's been almost 45 minutes and we are worse off kind of than when we started uh, just because I'm a little bit confused now I, I think I figured it out but the story is not being told very well that there was some kind of mother in a coma that must have given birth to Alma and then Alma must not age at least she, the way she appears doesn't age and so uh, she was eight years old when they potentially cloned her DNA to make Vextal but then Fextel would have had to have been like he has to be like 26 now so uh, 
it almost does imply that she is in no way corporeal or alive and she is just this ghost that exists at that age for all time because that's the only way the timelines even slightly make any sense because we've had backstory here as I've tried to understand it where Fextel at age 10 or so I think it was at age 11 he had the synchronicity event so you have Alma at that point when the synchronicity event uh, happened she should have been 19 uh, or she's just dead and always eight uh, and she certainly has not appeared like a 19 year old um, in most of the depictions we've seen of her and even then when Fe Fextel had that synchronicity event at 11 unless he is just super aged and he's only 12 right now it, he looks like he's in his 20s which would put Alma at that point on the timeline in her 30 39 40s uh, the, the whole thing falls apart and if Alma is in her 40s whatever mother gave birth to Alma would probably be in her 60s or 70s if she was still alive the the, the whole thing falls apart uh, yeah they 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 clearly didn't either explain themselves well in this story or they didn't write themselves well and i imagine it's they didn't write themselves well I, i've seen bad writing certainly do this before where they end up with hundreds if not thousands of years of backstory because they cannot be concise and just compress all of that into a more understandable realistic experience uh, it's very hard for people to relate to the chain of events that occurs through generation after generation after generation that's why when you have something like the elder scrolls games it is really just telling the story of what is happening in the main character's lifetime while giving a little bit of backstory to what happened in the past but not focusing on it enough to make it a major part of the plot uh, and because Elder Scrolls games have come out a lot they do have several different time frames that Morrowind or uh, I think Daggerfall is another one uh, the other Elder Scrolls games each took place in different time frames so you can reference what happened in the previous games while still not making it a big plot things and that's a nice little easter egg for people who've played the game before but since this is the first game in this series you can't really do that you can't have easter eggs to previous events uh, and i seriously doubt anybody who played this game even had access to the dlc that's the prequel dlc so if I was even willing to play the prequel DLC, which I'm not, playing it after 10 hours, if not really getting the plot told to me in a satisfactory way, to then hope that the prequel DLC explains the plot to me, is just ridiculous. Uh, this entire game could probably be boiled down into a 10 minute YouTube video where somebody explains the plot to you. And that really is probably what people should do in retrospect, is just watch a prequel video. And I, I don't know, there might have been a anime or movie that told the story too, and frankly that might be the best way to, to ingest this entire story, the entire trilogy. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam or gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.